back this evening with another video on a particular fountain pen, um, a review of sorts. I almost didn't do a review video for this particular pen because there are going to be a lot of reviews for this pen. It's been very highly anticipated, and typically I don't, I'm, I don't care about doing reviews for pens that lots of other folks have done or are going to do reviews for just because I'm no expert, clearly not the best production quality involved in my videos here. So uh, I usually want to leave it to the professionals uh, unless it's a pen that I have some particular affinity for or a pen I haven't seen a lot of reviews for, that kind of thing. I made an exception here because as of right now, I really only see um, one video. Dan from FP Geeks has a, a video review of this on YouTube, a really good review. Uh, I highly recommend it. I'll link it actually in the video description. Um, and I'm sure there will be lots of video reviews to come, but there aren't right now. There don't seem to be. So I'm going to do one. The pen in question <clears throat> is, as I mentioned, the highly anticipated Twisby Eco. Uh, this was their very ambitious project to do a piston filling fountain pen for under $30. Uh, they have other, um, you know, Twisby, of course, uh, one of the bigger players in the sub $100 fountain pen kind of market. And they have uh, really a lot of great pens. I, I own a couple. I like them. Um, and they are, when you start talking about wanting to get into piston fillers, basically non-cartridge converter pens, without spending a fortune, they're uh, really one of the names that comes up. They have pens like the Diamond 580. Mine happens to be the Green Edition, um, which itself is a successor to the 540, which was a successor to the 530, which is about a $50 piston filling pen, good pen. They have the VAC 700, which is a cool vacuumatic filling mechanism pen. But they wanted to push that price, and that's like $65, $75, something like that. Uh, I know it's gotten less expensive, not important. So they wanted to take that same idea and push the price point even lower. And so we got the Eco. Uh, which is short for economical. I actually did not know that and was calling this the Echo for a long time. The Twisby Echo. I don't know why it didn't occur to me that that's what they meant by ECO, Eco, economical. Uh, but it's been, Twisby has teased the community with pictures of prototypes and, and, and descriptions and, and, and things for a long time. So it has finally arrived here in the last few weeks. It's become, it's come into the United States from Twisby um, and has made its way to different retailers. Um, I got mine from Goulet Pen Company, got theirs in this week. They're already sold out, um, although uh, Brian has said in a couple of videos that he'd expect to get some more kind of early August, mid-August, so they'll have more, but the initial batch went like that. I mean, I, I got the email notification that they were in stock and ordered mine, and later that evening I checked and gone. So uh, clearly lots of people very interested in this pen, so hopefully this video is going to be a little bit useful. So enough, enough jibba-jabba. Let's talk about the pen. So this is the box that it comes in. This is pretty familiar. Uh, in fact, the box itself, uh, my box at least, is still stickered. I need to redo this because when I opened it, I screwed up the sticker. It's still stickered as it was be classic. Um, which is their um, their non-demonstrator piston filler. So uh, so that's kind of funny, I thought. Now the other two, the VAC 700 and the, the 580 are the only two other Twisbees I own. And they came in the slightly different, a little bit bigger Twisby box. It's like white with the, the translucent, not translucent, the clear plastic cover, kind of a, almost an Apple-esque aesthetic. Um, cover. This is a little bit more compact. I actually like this case a little bit better. It's kind of all one piece. I've already taken the pen out of here and inked it up and written with it. Um, so it's not actually in this box, but I'll show you what comes with it. You get uh, you get some 
paperwork in here um, that shows you, you know, how to fill it up, how to take it apart. It's it's Twisby, so the pen is just like all the other ones, fully dissemblable, and it comes with. And this is one of the coolest things about Twisby: all the things you need to maintain the pen. It's got a little. Um, vial of silicone grease. Now, I've not actually opened this to take a look, but yeah, it looks like the same silicone grease that comes with the other, their other pens. I find it a little too liquidy. I, uh, I prefer just the silicone grease that you can get in like a little tube for, uh, tub from like Goulet pens. Uh, most pen places sell them, but you could definitely use this if you, if you wanted to. Um, the wrench with this guy is a little bit different. I should have gotten one of the boxes from my other Twisbees out to show you, but you've all seen what they look like. Used to be you get a metal kind of double sided one. This is a plastic wrench. I actually like it a little bit better. It's a little bit more substantial to hold on to, um, and it kind of sits in there. And then the pen obviously went into this bottom section, um, and that's pretty much the box. It's very the box itself is kind of economical, and I like it. It's not going to win any beauty contest, but that's not what it's there for. Uh, one thing I didn't notice until just a little while ago when I got the box back out for the review. Close the box, Sam. Close the box. There we go. Is on the back. It's got a uh, a diagram, of all of the parts of the pen, and they're whoop, they're labeled over here. Uh, and there are only ten parts to this entire pen, including even if you completely dissemble the the piston, ten parts. It's kind of cool. Um. Oh, and I. Yeah, it's got you know more filling instructions that kind of stuff. So that's the box. Pretty standard Twisby packaging. Like I said, it's a little bit different than the Twisby, the other Twisby packaging I have, because of the particular pens I have, the, the 580 and the 700. I think this box is more common with like the Mini and the Classic. But that's the box. Enough of the box. That's not why we have the video. This is the pen. I got the version with the black cap and black piston filling knob. There is a version, of course, with a white cap, white piston filling knob. Um, this looks black here, but it's actually the ink reservoir. I have um, ink in it currently. So let's take a look at this bad boy. Um, you got the finial, which has the familiar Twisby logo. It is kind of a done-in-relief, kind of a matte plastic, very simple compared to kind of the shiny finial we'd see on like the 580 or the other ones. Uh, it has this clip, which again is very is different than the others. Um, it's got kind of this split, this open bit in the middle here. Um, it's flatter. It's a little less metal to it. Uh, it is a kind of is a very stiff clip, but I think it would it would work fine. I don't have any reservations about that. I don't clip stuff into a shirt pocket very often, so I'm not too concerned with that. But I think it would work fine for that. Uh, around the cat band, you have Twisby, and on the back side. Eco Taiwan, uh, and as usual, I'll have a link to a, a directory on my web host that has high resolution pictures of, of the pen in the box and everything. So it unscrews, screw cap. It does post, and it posts very securely. So it's so unlike the 580, 540, 530, it doesn't post on the filler knob. It actually posts past the filler knob, so you can post that. Um, and because the whole pen is so lightweight, there's very little metal in the pen. You've got the clip, the cap band, and the nib. Everything else is plastic. That's one of the ways they reduce cost. So unlike the 580 or the VAC 700 where you've got extra metal bits, um, this is a very light pen. Um, it's about three quarters of an ounce uninked. Um, so it doesn't get too heavy when it's capped, when it's posted. I find it a little on the unwieldy side, not bad. I could definitely use it posted. I've been using it unposted. That's kind of how I use, um, here's a good comparison. Um, dimension wise, it's it's not as heavy, but dimension wise, it's a little bit similar to the 580. It's a little longer than the 580, the nib's a little smaller. The sections are a little different, but it kind of a, has the same Weight aside, it's got kind of the same feel in the hand. 
So because I use my 580 unposted, because you kind of have to, unless you're going to be a dweeb and post it on the filling knob and get ink everywhere. Uh, I'm kidding. If you do that, you're not a dweeb. It's just I don't do that. Uh, I've been using the Eco unposted, but you certainly could. It's got a little O-ring here in the front or in the back, so it slips over the piston filling knob and is quite secure. But uh, that is that. And then there's another O-ring in the front. You get a nice positive stop when you screw it back in. The piston filling knob is this cool hexagonal shape. Um, and of course, it's your typical piston. You screw it down and screw it back up to drop ink. Um, one of the big innovations with this pen is that whereas on other Twisby pens, the grip section and the barrel would be two separate pieces. So on some of them, you'd have a metal grip section, but most of them, you'd have a plastic grip section that's screwed into the barrel. And that enabled Twisby to sell whole nib units, so it's basically the entire grip section. Like on my VAC 700, let's see if I can do this without getting ink everywhere. I've got a couple nib units for this guy. I've got a 1.5 stub. I've got a, I've got a, uh, a broad. So you just the whole thing comes off, and then screws back on. You can actually take the nib and feed out, but you can buy a whole nib unit from Twisby for the VAC 700, for the 580, I think for their other for all the other pens too. This is not the case. This is all, the grip section is part of the pen. Um, but that said, I wish I'd taken a picture of this before I inked it up. Although that, uh, oops, just gonna drop it everywhere. That uh, that video that Dan from FP Geeks did on the Eco, I will link it. He shows this happening. Although it's one thing, the nib and the feed are super easy to just, they're friction fit, they come out very easily. They're secure in there, but you can pop it out really easily. Um, there's a little shelf on the feed, so there's no danger of getting the nib like not on the feed quite right when you slip it back in. It's just boop, in out. When I flushed this thing before I filled it for the first time, it took like two seconds. It was no big deal. So that's very cool. This is probably, I would say this is even easier to maintain than other Twisby pens, and that's saying something. Um, so... Let's see if I can get a good picture of the nib here. So the nib is a little bit smaller. So the VAC 700 has a number six nib on it. The 540, 530, 580 has, I believe, a number five nib on it. This is a little bit smaller even than that. It's a little bit longer, but it's a little narrower. Um, I've heard this called a number three nib. I don't know if that's correct. I have also heard that this is the same or similar nib as what's on the Classic and the Mini. Again, I don't own those two pens, so I can't say that for sure, but from pictures I've seen, that seems about right. Uh, so that's, re that's really the pen. Um, aesthetically, I like it. It's very simple. Uh, I wasn't sure I would like the, the all plastic thing. Other Twisby pens have, you know, you get a metal, you're gonna have a metal ring back here usually, a metal ring up here. Gives it a, a little bit sturdier look, gives it some weight. This has none of that. I was not sure I would like it. I was afraid it would feel cheap, and it doesn't to me. It's light, for sure. Like I said, about three quarters of an ounce uninked. Um, but it feels pretty sturdy. I like the grip section a lot. Um, you can get pretty far down and it gets narrow, but you can go back, and the threads for the cap are not sharp at all to me, so I can hold it pretty high up and right very comfortably. Um, the cap's a little chunky. It's not, uh, it's hexagonal along with the, the piston filler knob. So, um, compared to like the five, the 580, the barrel is faceted, but everything's round. This is kind of the reverse situation. The, the barrel is round, but the, 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 the ends are hexagonal, but, uh, I like it a lot. Uh, and we'll do a writing sample here in a second so you can see how it runs. I bought this in a broad. My 580 is a broad, and I like that a lot. Um, when it comes to stainless steel, I've been out of autofocus for a while. I'm sorry. I'm probably crazy blurry. Um, when it comes to stainless steel nibs, my favorites are Yovo manufactured broad nibs. 
Twisby Nibs, Goulet Nibs, Bexley, Edison. Um, those are just my favorites. And this is this is a very smooth rider. Smoother, I think, even than the Brawn on my 580. So what everybody really wants to know is, is this pen going to crack? So Twisby pens have a bit of a reputation for some quality control might not be the right word, but but a tendency to er earlier pens especially, although I've heard it, I've heard anecdotes of this happening with newer pens too. Earlier pens especially, the 530, the 540, early iterations of the 580, early iterations of the classic, um, had a propensity apparently, I have not experienced it, to have cracking with the plastic, especially where the on what those is on what those pens is a separate grip section in the body where those made up you'd get stress cracks some in the cap that kind of thing twisby has taken steps to alleviate that like in this 580 which is a fairly late model this is not the aluminum 580 it's just the one that's got green accents but it's got a lot more metal reinforcement around the grip section and up here my vac 700 is similar um the 580 all the aluminum version is even more metal so they've taken some steps to try and correct that i have also heard that they are using a different a reformulated plastic um i don't know that, that that that's true but i've heard that uh so the bottom line is to me this feels very solid um i don't i don't this does not feel like not to knock the platinum preppy of which i happen to have one here not to knock the Platinum Preppy, but it does not feel like the same kind of plastic you get on a $3 pen. Um, it feels, it's plastic for sure. I mean, you're not getting precious resin, uh, but it, it but it feels pretty sturdy. The light weight is a little deceptive. Um, if you're kind of trained to correlate lightness with cheapness, this may feel cheap to you. Um, I have enough pens that are lightweight, but also very durable, that that's, my brain is kind of not trained to consider that anymore. So it feels just as durable as my other two Twisbees, which to me feel quite durable. Now, the big caveat to all of that is I have never had any personal experience with cracked Twisbees. That's not been a thing I've had to deal with. There's a couple of reasons for that, probably. One, I've just gotten lucky. Two, I'm relatively new to fountain pens in general. I've been collecting a little over a year. I've used fountain pens for longer than that, but in terms of buying new pens, being exposed to different manufacturers, that's really only started in earnest about the last year. And my, I've only owned these two Twisby pens. The Vac 700 was my first, and then I got the Diamond 580 a little later when the green accented version was on sale at Goulet because it was being discontinued or something. Um, I've only had those a few months, nine months, maybe for the 700, maybe six for the 580. I don't remember exactly. So any changes that Twisby has made to alleviate the cracking issue, added metal reinforcement, reformulated plastic. If they did that, like I said, I don't know for sure that they did that, but I've heard that I've benefited from those changes. I've got relatively late model Twisby pens. Additionally, I don't really knock my Twisbees around that much. Um, the VAC 700, I have a couple of nib units for it. I have a broad nib unit, but usually I have a, a, a pretty broad, a 1.5 millimeter stub in that guy. And I keep it inked up a lot, but I use it mainly at home. It's a, it's a playing around pen, to be honest. The 580, this does get carried to work. It is in the rotation of, out of my collection of 30 or 35 or 40 pens, um, there's like eight or so that are pretty constant rotation of pens that I will take to work with me to write, write notes throughout the day. The 580 is in that rotation. Um, it is, uh, I like the aesthetic of the pen. Green is one of my favorite colors. Um, I always keep it inked up with Diamine Apple Glory, my favorite green ink. So if I'm in a green mood, I go for that 580. So it does get carried to work sometimes, but it's in a laptop bag and then it's being used at the desk and then it's being put away at the end of the day. It's not like I throw it in my jeans pocket. Now, that being said, there aren't a lot of piston fillers that I would throw in my jeans pocket. I mean, my jeans pocket pen is my Quebec Revolt, my aluminum 
uh, like like all sport. But it doesn't get abused, is my point. So if I were a little harder on it, I might see some cracking by now. Or if I had an older model, I might have seen some cracking by now. So for me, for some people, me saying that this feels just as sturdy as my other Twisbees is kind of damning it with faint praise. For me, that's a sufficient statement. That's me saying, I feel like this pen will hold up. Now, again, it is a big volume of ink in this piston filler. I don't know if it holds. Um, you can look that up. Um, Goulet will have that information on their website usually, the ink capacity. Um, or I think they said they were in the process of measuring ink capacity for all their pens, so maybe they don't, but it, that information's on the internet, is my point. But it's a lot of ink capacity, and it is plastic. It's quality plastic, but it's plastic. My, again, not a pen I would throw in a pair of jean po jeans pockets. But going back and forth to work in my laptop bag, I do plan on using this for a few days. Um this coming work week and just seeing how I like it, seeing how it holds up. But so far, my impressions are very good. I like it. I would go so far as to say that in terms of comfort, um, both the grip section is a little longer. And so again, it gives you kind of some options to grip it high up for broader or go down lower. Um, the nib feels a little bit smoother than my 580, even though they're both broads uh, and they're both Yolo nibs. This feels a little smoother. Neither one's bad. The 580 is fine, but um, and I actually kind of like the lightweight. It makes it comfortable for riding for a long time. Um, as of right now, I think I like this better than my other two Twisbees. Now, that may or may not be the case after a week or two of use, but um, that's kind of where I'm sitting now. So I'm going to, good grief, 21 minutes. I can talk. Um, I'm going to cut away now to try to do a riding sample, but We'll do some size comparisons here. I already gave you the, oh, I didn't give you the dimensions. So um, I gave you the weight, about three quarters of an ounce uninked. Um, the diameter on the barrel is almost exactly a half an inch. When you get up here onto the onto the, the cap with the clip, it gets closer to like 0 0.65, 0 0.7 inches. Um, the length cap is about five and a half inches-ish. Um, uncapped, it's like four and a half. Is it actually a whole inch shorter? Or was my measuring tape off? It might be. I don't know. That feels wrong, but I did measure it. I don't know. Um, and then if you post it, it's about six and a half. So um, this it, it is a decently sized pen, but not oversized by any stretch of the imagination. Like I said, it's not the same as the 580 because it is lighter. And there are some dimensional differences, but it's kind of in that same size range. It's also similar-ish in size to like a Pelican M800 series pen. Um, kind of in that same ballpark. So I, I would call it a a big pen, but not a not an oversized pen. Uh, so that is the dimensions. We've been over the parts of the pen. We've talked about it. We've talked about the Twisby problem. Um, so I think we'll just do a writing sample and uh, and there we go. So we will be right back with that. Thanks. Okay, we are back for a writing sample with the relatively recently released Twisby Echo. I've already discussed a little bit the different parts of the pen, how it differs from other Twisbys, how it's similar. Um, so there's not really a lot left to do but to show you how it writes. Now, I'm afraid I don't have a very exciting ink in this guy. I inked it with Noodler's Heart of Darkness, which is my personal favorite black ink. Not the sexiest thing in the world, but... It's a nice saturated black ink, and um, we'll uh, we'll see how this writes for you here. So uh, let me, as, as always, bear with me as I am neither a professional uh, videographer nor do am I working with particularly great equipment. Um, so we have the Twisby Eco, and this is the broad nib very smooth it's very smooth the the bra that's in my 580 is pretty smooth uh this is very smooth um i would say the smoothest steel nibs i have ever used have been the yovo steel nibs the number six nibs that goulet pens sells they kind of give those nibs some extra love before they leave the factory uh well not for the factory but before they leave goulet after they get them from the factory I don't know if they actually tune them or if they just test them or whatever, but they're just 
buttery smooth um, rival gold nibs. Um, this is not as broad as those, even though it is also a Yovo nib, I believe. Uh, I think Twisby's still using Yovo for everything. Um, it's a little bit narrower than that, but it's still, a, I would say, is a proper broad, maybe a broad, maybe kind of a broad medium. Um, but it is extremely smooth. Um, and as I mentioned, this is Noodler's Heart of Darkness. But yeah, it is just, there's no skipping, no hard starting. I can leave it uncapped for 20, 30 seconds while I'm yapping. Writes fine. Um, do an actual sentence here. Hello. My name is Nigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. So, yeah, I mean, you saw just nothing. No skips, no, just, just reliable as can be. Um, really a, a joy to write. Now, there is basically no line variation that teeny little bit that we're seeing there, I'm honestly having to press it a little bit more aggressively than I'm comfortable doing. So, not going to get a flex out of this, but it just, the, I mean, it just keeps up. I can just do this all day long and no problem. So, um, and it is not a not a gusher, but it's it's wetter than the 580 that I've got. With some of the other Twisby, Twisby nibs I've used, I've had to display the tines out a little bit to, to get it to write a little wetter. have not had that problem with this. Um, it has just been uh, really fantastic. And what would a writing sample be without a reverse writing test? Well, and it's possible if you go at a high angle. I was at a two real low angle, but yeah, nobody actually does that. Uh, but uh, that is it. So that's it. That is the much anticipated Twisby Echo. Uh, I would say preliminarily, barring any quality issues that rear their head after a week or two of use, but based on my first impressions, having used it for a day, written a few pages with it, uh, not a few pages, a couple pages with it, um, very favorable impressions. I like it a lot. I think that if it holds up over time if it does not have the cracking issues that have plagued earlier Twisby pens. Uh, this pen could be a very, very serious contender. Uh, it's a piston filler for under $30. Um, the previous, you know, a pen like the 580, a piston for filler for 50 bucks, that was already a pretty good deal. Um, the only other pens you see like that, I actually have them in my pen cup if I can find it. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Ah, here it is. You know, typically if you're talking about a piston filler for under for that cheap, you're talking about like a dollar piston filler, dollar brand, not the cost of dollar. But that do only cost a few bucks. Well, this one needs to be cleaned. And these are, no, it's a good deal. They're fun to play with, but these are like preppy style plastic. You know, they're they're a whole nother league. Not the best nibs in the world. This is a legit pen um so um very very happy that i got my hands on one before they sold out um although there will be more coming so if you didn't get a chance to get one you're interested um as always i prefer goulet pens but they're available all over the place um and you can get either this cool black finish or the, there is a white finish as well uh but that's it so this pen this video is going to be pretty long but that's par for the course for me I think that's going to be my tagline, long-winded pen videos by a guy with funny, unkempt hair. Uh, so, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been at least a little bit useful to you. Um, I will link again down below in the description of the video the directory for the high-resolution photos, as well as that video from Dan from FP Geeks. His review is a little more concise uh, and very, very good. So, thanks very much, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Good night.